when you auditioned for this role, mm -hmm. were you auditioning for the role of a neuroscientist or had they assigned her a profession yet? No, so when I auditioned, um, I, I was in the season finale of season three. So the last episode of season three, um, Sheldon is set up on a date with you know, a female version of him and that's all that we knew. I had about five lines, it was very brief. Um, it was only when they brought me back in the fourth season, which I, I was also signed on for a guest spot with a, they say like guest possible recurring. So it was really uncertain. But when they brought me back in the fourth season, um, Bill Prady, who's our creator executive producer, he specifically said, you know, we figured we'll make her a, neuro a neurobiologist because then you can fix things if they're wrong. Um, <laughs> and, and they really kind of wanted the character to broaden out a little bit. They didn't want me to feel confined to what we had done because they kind of gave me very specific direction for how they wanted this character to first appear. Um, but then they made her a neurobiologist. Um, and, and yeah, and the characters definitely changed a lot. Do you get to use your knowledge in the lab? <laughs> um, yeah, I even mean the lab set, I right? Mean. So, so s some of my knowledge is also used even when we don't have a lab set. Meaning, if we're discussing something in neuroscience, um, they'll often kind of run it by me. Or even, you know, as as a fine institution like UCLA trains me, I was trained in chemistry and physics and biology and anatomy. And so sometimes other things will be wrong. And you know, I, I like to say like I get like a little twitch when something's wrong. And it, you don't want to say to Chuck Lorre, "That's wrong, Chuck. That's wrong." Um, but there was once a scene where I, um, I'm trying to instruct Sheldon how to massage. Like we were on the phone, and I'm trying to instruct him how to massage a certain muscle, and like it was just like they got close, but it wasn't right. And and Chuck, it was at a run through, and Chuck said like, "Mayim, is this right?" And it was like you could hear a pin drop, and everybody looks at me. I was like, "Oh, you know." <laughs> And he said, can you just fix it and email us? <laughs> and I was like, Phew, yes, I will fix it and email you. And so I didn't have to, in front of Chuck, say, this is what you got wrong. Um, but no, I, I don't try and rub my neuroscience brain in people's face. Um, but when we do have lab scenes, absolutely, I work. We have an amazing props department. I mean, if you focus on the props, on any given episode of Big Bang, just look at the props. Look at all the things that, that are part of our show that way. They're amazing. Um, but yeah, I have had to say, like, well, this is what a tumor would look like here. Oh, that's not where the tectum would be, we need it down here, and oh, and I mean, I've actually, I've carved the, you know, the fourth ventricle into slices, because, you know, they can do it from a diagram, but like, why not have me do it with, you know, a scalpel? Um, and also, we, we have to figure out what's the best material to use to make it look like human brain when we've had dissections. Um, so a lot of times it's props, we were supposed to have like a vat of sheep brains, and they were just props, and our props guy mixes up all sorts of, I'm vegan, so this is very hard for me. He mixes up all sorts of ground raw meats and cheeses and because you have to get the right color. At least we want to get close. So I know it's not always perfect, but we try and get close. Also, consistency is important when pretending to slice. Um, it has to really look right and with the tumor and stuff. And anyway, it's, I mean, when I watch the show, it's really, you know, between the physics, the neuroscience, right. it seems very important to the producers it's to very keep things accurate. It's our, I mean, it's our, it's our writers and our producers. Um, our writer's room looks a lot more like a group of professors than a group of writers. Um, they're super bright. They're very thoughtful. Many have backgrounds in science or science, you know, satellite kind of things. Um, Bill Prady was a you know, computer nerd for a million years, so um, we have a very bright group of writers and producers, and honestly, that's the strength of the show. I mean, it's fantastic that Jim Parsons has Emmys and Johnny Galecki was nominated, and we love that people love us, but it, the show is really about the words and, and, and our writers. <laughs>